Um, Steve Barnett wrong to um, give him the prize because the Guardian is the only one of, uh, of this manner. I've, I've got a question for Lord Bell, which, which I hope isn't going to be insulting. Um, the, the question is, I find myself against my expectations um, uh, agreeing, actually, um, with the opponents of this motion. Um, and actually, if you read Nick's book um, deep down, uh, so does Nick. Um, because he, he actually talks about the problem being the structure of the industry. I think there's a wonderful phrase in the book which talks about the, the industrial production of ignorance or something like that. So, uh, but for, I appreciate the debate's an artifact, but my question comes directly out of something that Lord Bell said, which is that at the bottom of the problem is competition and the inability or the unwillingness of owners to put more money in. Um, Lord Bell, you personally were responsible uh, some people believe, for the election of the Prime Minister who embodied competition as the basis of all good and all virtue. Uh, are you now saying that actually perhaps unbridled competition is not quite the universal panacea that we were told it was during the 80s? And if that's true for the media industry, how are we going to resolve the problem of a media and a press which is fundamentally and in here I entirely agree with Nick, fundamentally actually in very bad shape and actually fundamentally dishonest. What do we do about it? Jim, Jim, well, competition. Um, I, I, sorry, I'll try not to ask every point you made. I didn't elect Margaret Thatcher. She was elected by the electorate, um, and, and she would have been elected whether I worked for her or not. Um, so I don't want you to, for anybody in this room to think I'm claiming credit for her election, or even that matter bad in doing it. Um, competition wasn't invented by her. She was very keen on competition, and, and the media industry has always been very competitive. The problem is cover price. Um, the problem is that there is a movement within industry to produce, be the low-cost producer. Rupert Murdoch has always used price as a method of competing, always by lowering it, not by increasing it. And we live in a world which, for many, many years, we've never paid the right price for a newspaper because they've always cost more because it's been subsidised by advertising revenue. The trouble with the advertising industry is it's what's known as a cyclical market. If the economy is doing well, people spend more on it. If the economy is doing badly, they spend less on it. We're now entering a phase um, when the economy is turning down and less money will be spent on advertising. I'm afraid I watched... Um, uh, the woman who runs The Guardian last night win the Verve Clico Businessman of the Year, and she said that she was going to have to cost cut this year because of the downturn in advertising revenue. And that's going to mean journalists lose their jobs. Uh, technology has tried to compensate for a lot of it, um, but it is a really serious problem. You, you, you may be, like Nick and Roy, opposed to the idea of making a profit, which I gathered they were from what they said. I'm personally not. I actually think there is a purpose in making profits. It's what pays their wages as and when they're working. Um, and... Um, and so, because they're not no, actually... I'm sorry, that's a flip answer. This isn't that no one's against making profits. The question is about competition. Well, what is... You, you said that the, the problem only was way competition. You how do we resolve that and how do we rescue what you yourself agreed mm -hmm. was a problem? That you rescue it by increasing the price of the product and having consumers prepared to pay more for it. That is, there is no other solution. They won't. You have to make more money. Really, sir, thank you. Because it costs more. I'll, I'll take a gentleman up there on... The, yes. Yeah, there. Thank you. Um, hi there, it's Martin Coder from Lansing's Public Affairs. Um, I'm, I'm a lobbyist, really, but I do dabble in, in PR. Um, I just want to come back to this question about narrative. And I don't really understand what it is, Roy, when you say there's something wrong about constructing a narrative. And isn't there a, a bit of a cheek about that when the media does that itself? And the public know that. You know when you buy the Financial Times, the narrative behind the Financial Times is that the story is what matters is, uh, you know, who owns things. The narrative behind the Daily Mail is that, you know, England isn't what it used to be. The narrative behind the Guardian is that the Guardian knows best and nobody's got anything else to offer. And, and the narrative behind the Sun is they don't care what the story is so long as it involves an attractive and, and preferably topless woman. <laughs> and everybody knows that. When you're buying those papers, you know what the narrative behind the story is. You know what the take is. So isn't it a bit of a cheek to go attacking that? Right. Well, I think it's an amusing uh, comment, but look, the, the point about narrative is it, it creates the possibility, it locks in a set of possibilities and locks others out. That's exactly, you construct a story in that fashion. Now, you've heard about uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction. I'm not going to go over that again, but the construction that the government uh, wished to have 
in the lead up to the 2003 invasion of Iraq was that on a number of, in a number of ways it wished to say this is the most dangerous man in the world and he imminently could bring us all closer to destruction. And everything was fed into the press machine in order to create that and make it possible. Even though a million people marched in London, even though the countries around the world were against it, and even though, of course, Rupert Murdoch helped to construct that narrative, 175 of his newspapers all supporting the war. So <clears throat> that's what I mean. It's not, it's not simply, of course, a PR matter, but it is the, and this is the important thing, it's about the PR way of doing things. That's what's happened. That's the creation of a narrative. 